Jason. Yes. You're on the line with Ed from Live. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ed. Good. How are you doing? Well, thank you. And you? I'm doing fine. Good, good. I had the good fortune of traveling to Philadelphia um, in November last year to see your show um, in Philadelphia. I think it was around about the 18th or 19th of November. Oh, cool. And it was particularly good. Thank you very much. And now you're coming to South Africa eventually? Yeah, we'll be there in June. And uh, looking forward to it, I hope? Very much so. We've been um, wanting to come to South Africa for years and finally just said we have to come down on this world tour. You know, we have to go to South Africa. So it came together, thank thankfully. Mm -hmm. And any expectations? I'm, ex I'm expecting a really, um, a, you know, a energetic response. I, I think from what we've heard, um, you know, our fans down there are completely um, stoked and mm -hmm. excited for us to come down. So mm -hmm. I'm expecting a, a huge party and a huge amount of energy, mm. which I, and I'm sure I won't be disappointed. No, absolutely not. Um, as I say, it's uh, it's been a long time coming, and... Uh, so, so I think your your fan base here is uh, well. I know I know all the first shows have, uh, are literally sold out at this stage. So I think it's going to be a good one. But now, um, you know, for, for a band that's been around as long as you have, is this something that I mean? Obviously, new territories must be um, a challenge and an excitement for you. But um, has has this album been any different to tour than say the last? Well, this this album, internationally speaking, is our biggest one yet. Um, we've had number ones, obviously, in South Africa with Dawson's Crime. We've had them in, in uh, Australia and uh, Holland and Belgium. And so we've done uh, more internationally on this record, success-wise, than we've ever done. Um, even Throwing Copper was nowhere near as uh, successful as The Distance to Here um, internationally for us. So this is a very exciting time for live. Mm -hmm. Because we were watching, we're watching our music grow all over the world, and that it, that is just so much, so gratifying. Um, but this, the touring for this record has been really fun because of that. I mean, the fact that you know we we tour the United States, and we've always been you know successful here for a long time. So sure. now that we can go to places like South Africa and Australia, and be um, even even bigger, actually, even you know mm -hmm. even more fans at, at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, and coming to shows in, in that regard, and anyway, the, the concert aspect um, is really, really fun, and it's 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 just uh, we have to pinch ourselves all the time because we we you know we're still just uh, four guys from a small town in Pennsylvania, and mm -hmm. here we are making music that um, is, is swimming the oceans, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's really cool. And I mean, um, with this album being the international success that it's been, what do you think it is? that it was on this particular album that, that this one sort of translated even even uh, more so than, than the others? I think there's a, a, a sexiness and a soulfulness to it, uh, to all, all the songs on this record, and, and, a, and a real happiness, a real, a real optimism. Mm. But, it's, but it's done musically, it's, it's still intense, and it's still um, you know, just a lot of focus on the songwriting and the production to, mm. to just give the lyric the launch pad that that it needs to have like a song like the dolphins cry i mean this the music and the way we produced it really assist the lyric to really take you somewhere positive and and ultimately sensual and, mm -hmm. and so there's a there's a whole um depth to this album that we've grown into you know it wasn't mm -hmm. something that uh, we learned to do overnight it's, it's it's the fourth album and it's i i think it's our finest because of that because of the the amount of growth and the the amount of good songs on it so i just i just think that you know the international fans have just responded really dramatically to that mm. i mean do, do you think that people um your fans obviously in particular sort of um respect a, a band like that because there's uh, probably with you know with a plethora of, of bands that are out there that there seems to certainly be um a genuineness or a sincerity in, in what you're doing and a, and a, a genuine sort of commitment to deliver, you know, the, the best music that you can. Yeah, I think that we've, I think that we've earned that over the years. I think we've proven it for albums that, you know, we're, um, we're about growing. We're about this organic growth thing with, between the four of us, and we're not about to put out something that, you know, is just part two of something that was successful or is less than everything that we can put into it, you know, and all the energy that we can put into it. Um, 
I think that we've earned a, a respect, yeah, amongst amongst our fans, and we we value that relationship with them mm. Uh, mm. to an extreme degree. Um, and it's not just about you know some some pop phenomenon. It's a, it it may be, but it's but it's not just that. It's a, it's a relationship with the fans that that we've built over years. Mm. Um, that uh, I think is just now coming back to uh, coming back to us in other in other countries. You know, and, sure. and that feels really good. Sure. And I mean, you said what I mean. I think at a press conference when when the new album came out, it was a case of that you were hoping that this album would, you know, would take take you into the into the you know, obviously into the new millennium, but um, also just re reestablish um, rock in its rightful place, which um, I think you've you've obviously done that. I think there's a you know I think that rock and roll, um, when rightly viewed, is like a, is a tradition, just like um, any, any art tradition um, that started back in the you know in the fifties with you know um, Buddy Holly and these guys, and it has evolved into something much broader and, and, and much more important. And the impact of rock and roll when it's done with a lot of heart and a lot of uh, care mm -hmm. is is really unrivaled. Mm -hmm. um, and I take that I take that seriously. I don't take myself seriously, but I take <laughs> I take the fact that you know um, what we do in, in the terms of the artistry that we put out there is is something that um, has a tremendous impact on people and. Mm -hmm. Um, which is why we, we've always tried to make the lyric, or I've tried to always make the lyric something that informs people about where I'm really at in my life, you know. And and that's what makes it set, that's what makes live the, it makes live concerts so fun mm -hmm. because you really feel that it's a bunch of people united in music and united in a desire to to just keep going and to keep having things unfold, mm -hmm. you know, within and without the music. You know, it's it's a, it's a whole experience and. Um, I'm really excited. To, I'm excited to go anywhere and do it. But the fact that you know it's it's doing so well in South Africa is really, um, mm. it's it's really a good thing, and we're, it's it's really given us a lot of uh, a lot of excitement. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the thing is, I think a lot of bands tend to try and um, not try and replicate what they did on the last album, but they perhaps try and, and add things that don't necessarily need to be there. You've always had a very simplistic approach, kept the band obviously to the number that it is. Um, the, yeah, the, as you said, the lyric is what is is what is important, and obviously the melodies. But the the, the structure is is still, and the formula is still very much the same as as it was on the debut. So, do, do you think that's that as well also um, helps? I think it's you know I, um, because the lyric is is so important to what our life does. Um, we've always tried to write songs that just, like I said, provide a launch pad for the mm. lyric um, in the sense of the music and how we produce the music. Mm. Um, we do everything live in the studio. I mean, we do, we perform everything. We don't, we hardly ever track anything in that sense. With everything is, that you hear on record from live is, is performed. The four of us right there in the studio, you know, very old school that way. Mm. Um, but yet, you know, a song called Voodoo Lady, mm. on this record, we, we added all kinds of Groove enhancing loops, kind of within Chad Gracie's drumming, mm. but we would never replace his drumming with it. Mm. It's just you know we're not a, we're not afraid to experiment. We like all kinds of music these days. I love Moby. I love Nine Inch Nails. I love that approach mm. um, and the integration of that with live and the soulfulness of live. I think is something that maybe we'll do more of in the future. But if mm. you listen to Voodoo Lady, it's already there. Yeah. There's also a song called Where Fishes Go, where the mm. the guitar is totally back. I mean the the actual melody of the guitar was turned around in a computer and played mm -hmm. backwards. Mm -hmm. So, we're, you know, we're out there doing stuff. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, the, the basis of the band is still the heart and soul of Chad Gracie's drums, mm -hmm. um, who I think has just become one of the finest rock drummers around just because he's so unique and he's so powerful live and he doesn't use anything in concert except his, his body to <laughs> just create this amazing soundscape. So, um, you know, it's like when you have a band as good as what we have mm -hmm. and, and can play as good as what we can together just with, you know, guitars and drums and bass, mm -hmm. it's it's not something we, we want to readily put down no. uh, in, in favor of, of experimentation. Um, sure. Not that we won't experiment, but the, but the basis of live is really just this in, incredible chemistry we have with each other in concert mm -hmm. and, and, and with our own instruments that we've, you know, learned to play when we were 14. Sure. And I mean, I think the, the credibility comes in from the, from the fact that you... You know that people would say that rock has got a ceiling on it. I mean, you can only do you can only do so much before you land up sort of um, replicating what you did, you know, two albums ago or, or that sort of thing. Which um, you 
there, there, there doesn't seem to be a ceiling on what live is doing musically. Yeah, you know, I think that um, you listen to a song like The Dolphins Cry, yeah, I mean, there's a there's a live element if you could, you know, put it in the same boat as maybe like an I Alone or something mm-hmm. in, the, in, the, in a dynamic similarity. Mm-hmm. But yet The Dolphins Cry, I feel, is totally, um, a, a, you know, in, in that sense, a new song for live because of just there's subtleties like the vocal delivery, the, the um, you know, the... the bridge part of the song you know there's a, there's there's a lot that we've done that we've on that song that we've never done before but yet it sounds like live mm. um there are other songs on the record like um the distance and i mentioned voodoo lady mm-hmm. um which are totally new for us so sure. i mean we've never done anything like the distance as far as i can remember and mm. so we've always we're always kind of on even even though there may be recognizable elements from from live history and, and every record, mm. I think that we're always there's always a couple songs where you say, oh, well, that sounds new, or that mm. sounds like something they might expand upon in the future, and that's mm. the distance for me. Mm. I I really feel like that that kind of ease and that kind of optimism and that kind of free flowing creative thing that we have in that song is really something that we couldn't have done three years ago. It was something that we grew into, and uh, I, I would say that it sounds like the future to me. So I'm, that's probably my favorite song on the album because of that. Mm. I mean, and, and when you put an album together like The Distance to Here, and you're thinking to yourself, okay, well, we finished the album now. Is this, you know, are, the, are all the tracks on here the kind of tracks that we can take out and we can perform, you know, um, to, you know to our fans and, and have it be as good as it is on the record, if not better? That's definitely part of the consideration, yeah. I mean, do, how does it feel when we're playing it together? Does it feel like our, our audience would will, will appreciate this? Yeah, that's, that's part of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, our, our, it's funny because we, we, we really did pick the name live out of a hat. It was not a very conscious decision, but yet everything that we do mm-hmm. uh, is, is somehow um, formulated or based on um, the, the, just the performance of it in general and, and in real terms, in real life situation, live. You know, I mean, it's, it's really the, the sort of guts of what we do. Mm-hmm. And um, as I said, the show that you're going to bring to South Africa, is it, is it the show that, uh, that the rest of the world has seen? Yes, it is. And I, I really think it's our finest um, show yet because we've, we actually add, we've added two touring members. My brother, Adam, yeah. Adam Kowalczyk, will be playing... Uh, guitar, rhythm guitar and singing, right. and we have a great keyboard player named Michael Railton, yes. um, and so I'm free to kind of do whatever I want on stage, you know, play a little guitar here, but I'm not bound to the stage with a guitar mm. as I was during the, like, the touring copper tour and mm. that kind of thing, mm. um, so I think that we've been saving, you know, jokingly, but <laughs> but not maybe not, <laughs> we've been saving our best for South Africa, because it, it definitely... We have we've been wanting to come down there for for years, and mm. we finally got our show to a point where I think it's it's the finest that we've ever done. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, it obviously sounds. I mean, it certainly sounds like you're all enjoying yourselves. But um, you know, on the back of the, the the success that you're enjoying internationally now as well, does it does it make it easier that you can sort of maybe just take one step back and actually enjoy the the experience perhaps a little more than you were around like when when Throne Copper was doing doing the business? Well, you know, we we were 24 years old when that when that record exploded all over the world. I mean, um, especially in the United States. We've we've grown as a band to, to appreciate and have a big enough uh, world view mm. uh, to appreciate what we've been able to accomplish. Um, not that we didn't appreciate Throwing Copper, but it was such a, a freight train mm. of success mm. to a bunch of guys who basically still, you know, just four guys from York, Pennsylvania had hardly ever even seen anything, never been to university, never heard mm. anything, you know, any kind of life experience, and all of a sudden, boom, you know, we're supposed to be able to, you know, kind of take this all in. Mm. Well, between that record and, and Secret Samadhi and now this album, mm. you know, we're, we're um, I'm 28 years old, I'm, I'm kind of like, come to a point in my life where like, I really, really appreciate um, not only the hard work that we do, but then the success that we've enjoyed with this record worldwide is just, we do, we take none of it for granted, and it is, it is totally blissful. Mm. So there's, I mean, obviously the way it's it's happened. I mean, I'm, I'm sure at the time of throwing copper, there was probably, as you said, for such a new experience for you. Whereas now you're in a place where you can actually take it all in and and, and not blow it, you know. And not blow it, and not mm-hmm. and not underappreciated, or, or seem to be, uh, you know, um, not really grasping the, mm. the, the the scope of it. Um, mm-hmm. We are no, we're we're, we're in. We're all smiles. Mm. <laughs> well, all that, smiles. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, 
Ed, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Yeah. And uh, again, I look forward to seeing a second show. So, say, um, if, right. if the Philadelphia show was anything to go by, um, it's going to be phenomenal. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good day. Take care. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye.